What's going on guys, it's Little Tiki Torch here back with another Beach Boy Riverside. Before we get into it, let me go ahead and ask you to hit that like and sub button and watch till the very end. Don't be Yamcha. Come on guys, it's only a couple minutes. If you do, thanks my G, appreciate it. Alright, let me start off by saying this. What happened to uh, the cliffhanger in episode 3, huh? Yeah, where Sela had to choose between Mikoto and Sumeragi. You remember that one? Well, this episode had me asking that after I watched it. I had to go back to episode 4 to see if the filler touched on it, and it didn't. It was just a filler of how Mikoto and Sally met in the past and how she came to realize that she too had a power inside her that was like Mikoto. And now we're on episode five and still throughout the episode, there's still nothing that touches on the cliffhanger. I swear I'm keeping an eye out for it, but I must be missing it. So if you guys know what's going on, let me know down in the comment section below. I did hear from somebody that I was talking to that it could be because it's out of chronological order. And if that's the case, I don't know why they're doing that because they're not doing it very well like how they're trying to you know piece it together it's making it very hard to follow and i think at this point there's going to be a lot of people that will drop off of it episode five or frow and the vampire it was interesting at first right it had the jack the ripper type opening to it right making you think that it's kind of dark right a dark story that you're going to be watching but um it's not exactly how you end up leaving to be honest uh i think the story at this point is way more interesting with frow than it is with sally herself uh also with miki i think they're both much more interesting stories than sally right now though i suppose watching redemption always makes for a good story so miki is still trying to figure out how humans work and still trying to figure out you know why they act the way that they do how they can be so destructive towards things or people that they don't know and this is definitely worrying miki because I think she's kind of terrified about where she stands with Sally since Sally's power is so much greater than hers and she is still an ogre after all so it does stand a reason that Sally could use that power against her. Although I think it's just Miki that's going to make that happen by her thinking this way and it's going to cause her to betray Sally and Frau later on down the road. Although she does betray them in this episode too. But let's get on to Frau. She's a main protag. I'm joking. She's not. But uh... <laughs> She did say something that was pretty odd to me. Uh, Frau had been experiencing this type of treatment for a long time from humans. When she said this, I thought that if that's so, then since humans are mistreating her, they must be tormenting her or torturing her or, you know, possibly worse. And if that was true, how was she coming back or how is she still alive? And then that got me thinking, like, maybe she's not demi-human. Maybe she's not a hair folk, right? So... I ended up getting a little bit of an idea of to what she really was, right? We kind of see her after Miki and her exchange, you know, some stories about, you know, life in the past and humans the way that they are now. She ends up finding Kyukitsuki, who is the vampire in the castle, behind the castle walls of where he's living actually right now. And he's the vampire going around drinking people's blood and, He's actually an ogre who can, you know, bend the, the blood to actually his will. And that's his power. He just has the blood magic, pretty much. Well, not blood magic, blood power, whatever you want to call it. But it didn't really make much. His story didn't make much sense. His story was that he lived amongst humans for a while and he enjoyed it. He enjoyed the human experience and he enjoyed falling in love with this woman. And then for some reason on the night of his wedding, he freaking kills her. And somebody's going to be like, well, the instinct chose, made him, uh, you know, lose himself. And it's like, well, hold on, wait, you're telling me after all this time, this dude's been living amongst humans, this dude's been with this chick the whole time. And just now, just now is the time when the ogre in him's like, oh, now I must drink your blood. No, dude, that's not happening. Come on. This dude's persona is not like that. This dude's persona is just like the vamp movies that you see all the time where they fall in love with the girl. And then any time that they start getting to this point where they can't control themselves, they leave or they do, they go do something so that they don't hurt that particular person that they care for much more deeply than they do their own clans. Wow. I kind of sound like I know a lot about vampires and I actually really don't like vampires, like werewolves more. That's kind of weird. But anyway, <laughs> digress. So after this dude does this, uh, Miki, it gives Miki a different perspective though. I gotta say, she's like, oh, wait, if he was able to live amongst humans, maybe I can too. It, he actually dies, like, actually, he dies the same way as the vampires do too. They're like, oh, man, I finally died. You know, I gotta say, as I'm thinking about this now, 
Are they just ripping things off? Nah. Frau ends up beating this guy to a pulp after he blows half her top half off, man. I mean, he just destroyed her, just cut her in half, and she gets transported to a heaven plane, or heavenly plane, I'll call it, and see the angel whose name is Alta, and Alta lets Frau know that she's going to revive her and not reincarnate her. And when I heard that there was reincarnation, I thought to myself, what if she is a fallen angel? Or better yet, what if she was a human and was reincarnated as a demi-human but kept her soul intact for like a punishment, you know, in order for her to get back into the gates of heaven? Then there was a third theory that I thought, like, what if she was a demon? And a demon that was on par with a higher ranking demons like in the seven deadly sins, like the demon king. And I only say this because she kind of looks like As Asta when he finally unlocked some of his demon abilities. So I think it stands to reason that that could be a huge possibility. And I think it'll be fun seeing how Frau steals the show a little bit from Sally for the time being. Unless Sally in this next episode will actually start to turn up the dial on her power and her fight scenes, their fight scenes are so lame, dude. They're, they're really bad. They're like fairy tale fights where it's just like really staticky and a lot of talking involved and less of a fight. And then you get like some fight, like some point where it's like super VFX and you're like, oh yeah, it's so captivating and it's awesome. And the only part that's awesome is freaking Frau being dark Frau. So right now I'm not very happy about the last two episodes. So I'm going to give this episode uh, three bacon cheeseburgers out of, I don't know, 52 peas. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching all the way through. I hope you guys have a great and wonderful weekend. And you guys, I'll see you next time. Peace.